I would wake up every morning and watch the stories and just be rooting for Niall to catch this little dog that had been slashed with a machete and just could not believe when we got home and she was sitting on my bed that it was the same little dog that was sitting on my bed in Thailand. I really feel truly, truly lucky. She's just a delightful. <laughs> Hope was actually one of the first dogs that ever came to the land. I think she was about number three and she came there when there was there was really nothing built but we weren't ready but she was in such a bad state that we just really had to get her into one of the little suites. When Hope first came in she had big deep open wounds. I'd known her for a while but she had recently been cut with a machete. She'd been shot with a nail gun and I'd sterilized her in the past and knew her puppies etc but the abuse had just got so bad that I needed to get her out of there. It took about two weeks to catch her in the wild, but we eventually caught her because uh, she was so traumatized after the attacks and we were able to bring her up to the land. She was absolutely terrified because, I mean, she'd obviously been going through torture and abuse and she probably thought we were there to do the same thing. Even though she knew us for a while, her recent mood had changed because she'd, she'd been so badly abused. There was no real long-term plan for Hope at the start. It was just to get her into the land. And as I said when I was naming her, I called her Hope because she had no hope. And I was like, first thing we can do is let's just get her some hope back. I was pretty new to rescuing dogs at this stage. I didn't know the long-term prognosis. I didn't know if she'd ever recover. It was just a very scared, traumatized dog who needed a place to call home. So I first met little Hopi on the 7th of December. I'd flown out to Koh Samui on the 21st of November. I'd already been in touch with Rod at Samui Street Dogs prior to me coming out. He said to me, are you free? Because my other half is back in Australia at the moment and I've got to go to the land today. I've got to do some work there, but could do with some help walking the dogs and just, you know, playing with them, things like that. He picked me up that week. And as we were driving into the land, I was like starstruck. I was like, oh my god the land we're going into Niles land he was like yeah Niles land I was like oh my god and it just took me back to all these Instagram footage that I'd been watching and I think a lot of people when they visit Niles land they instantly think of McMuffin and think oh my god we're gonna meet Miss McMuffin but for me it was always hope so as we were driving in I literally thought oh my god I'm gonna meet hope I just found she was the most delightful little soul there's actually a video footage of me when I was doing the tour around the kennels I was filming it all for my mum and I did um, a little intro into hope and there's actually a little bit of footage of me saying you're very very sweet you know can I have you can you come back to the UK with me and this little lady is Hope you're very timid do you want to come back to the UK with me can I have you and I think I just manifested it because it, the rest was history after that it was about a week later that I actually met Niall he'd said to me like you know how you getting on you've got any favorites and I was like yeah yeah Hope, Hope's definitely my favorite and I knew at that time I really wanted to adopt Hope there was never a good time to actually ask Niall if I could adopt her so he actually worked out that I ended up sending him a voice note on New Year's Day and I was so nervous in it. I literally, <laughs> when I listen back to my voice note now, I'm just all over the place. I'm all like, um, I just wondered if it would be possible. Um, I just, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I just basically, <laughs> I was just rambling on and then I was just like, could I please adopt Hope? And he sent me a message back like immediately. And he was like, absolutely, you know, couldn't think of a better home. And I was just like, absolutely buzzing. It was like, set my new year off. So like, <laughs> so, so, so excited. I just couldn't believe that I was gonna bring this little dog back with me. What are you doing? This is the first time you've ever, ever got up on the couch. Samui and Jules very kindly took myself and Hope to the ferry port. We got a two hour ferry from Koh Samui to the mainland. So that was the first time that it really felt real because it was just me and Hope on the ferry and it was really daunting because I thought, oh my God, I've literally got sole responsibility for this little dog now. 
Um, we got to Donsak, which is the main ferry port in uh, Suratani, which is the mainland. And there we got a taxi to Bangkok through the night. So on the Tuesday, we then went and got our vet checks. And up until the vet checks, we wasn't, hope wasn't actually confirmed on the flight. So my anxiety was through the roof because we were flying Tuesday night at midnight and we didn't get her vet checks back until about two o'clock, I would say, in the afternoon, uh, but they still hadn't confirmed her on the flight. And I was really panicking, thinking, I think I'm gonna have to leave her here and I'm gonna have to wait in Paris for her. And then I think she got confirmed on the flight about 5 p.m. Everyone was sending me so many lovely messages of support and all praying that Hope was getting on this flight and then um, she made it, so <laughs> it was brilliant. We got to the airport and putting her in the crate was oh, horrific. I cried and cried and cried. <laughs> You're gonna go to sleep, Papa? Yeah? You've got your pillow and you've got my t-shirt and you've got your little bed. And I was an absolute mess on the flight because we had a night flight. I was just hoping that it was her bedtime and that she'd just sleep and everything would be okay. And fortunately it was, and I saw her at the other end. So we arrived in Paris. We went over to Calais to do the vet check and we managed to get onto the Euro tunnel. We went through, which was about another half an hour. And then we drove to Folkestone where they dropped us off and my mum and my brother picked me up. And then we drove all the way back to Chelmsford. <laughs> absolutely delightful and I just could not believe when we got home and she was sitting on my bed that it was the same little dog that was sitting on my bed in Thailand it was just felt so surreal she adapts to everything so fast nothing has phased her I've not sensed any anxiety with her she's absolutely obsessed with grass obsessed with running now I think the cooler weather has given her so much more energy and it's just lovely that she's so confident now she's got nothing to worry about like she's so confused by domestic dogs she's so confused why they're not barking at her or coming towards her or like just showing aggression she's just really living freely now she's just got no worries in the world <laughs> Hopey means to me, she means absolutely everything. She's changed my life completely. She's got her own Instagram page now, which her followers have been absolutely unbelievable. And they've all become friends of mine now. It's been, it's just been lovely. We just have general chit chats, but she is the most endearing little soul. I just would love to know what she's thinking. I really would. She's just so, so sweet. She's wonderful. She's, she's just, Oh, she's just amazing. I just absolutely adore her. I'm really, really <laughs> obsessed with her. I couldn't be more blessed. I really feel truly, truly lucky. She's just delightful. <laughs> but she's, yeah, she's lovely. I love her. And I just want to say thank you so much, Noel, for letting me have her because she's beauty. She really is beautiful.